Though it covers two-thirds of our planet, only one percent of the Earth's water is drinkable. All life down through the ages has been sustained by the same supply of water, thanks to nature's natural recycling system. Our demand and uses for water have outpaced nature's ability to clean the water for us, forcing us to alter water's course once again to treatment plants. It is at wastewater treatment plants like Madison's Nine Springs that the water we so conveniently tap and contaminate every day is recycled and restored to a safe condition for return to our natural surface waters. When you consider the life cycle of water, the presence of wastewater treatment plants is quite modern. Simply stated, wastewater is the water we have used what we have after we've brushed our teeth, flushed the toilet, and made thousands of products. This is the water that drains from our homes, schools, businesses, and industries into our sewerage system. It's different than tap water, which is pumped into our homes, schools, and businesses from water treatment facilities. In the Madison metropolitan area, subsurface groundwater is pumped into our taps from municipal and private wells. Today, water and wastewater treatment facilities are a necessary and critical part of the Earth's water cycle, and they've taken their cue from the naturally occurring recycling processes that have served us so well through the ages. Every day, over 40 million gallons of wastewater is received at the Madison Metropolitan Sewerage District's Nine Springs Wastewater Treatment Plant. Every day, the same amount of effluent or treated water is released or discharged to Badfish Creek and to Badger Mill Creek. And every year, almost 40 million gallons of biosolids, known commercially as MetroGrow, is produced to fertilize area farmlands. 40 million gallons would roughly fill Camp Randall Stadium half full every day. In a month's time, this volume of wastewater would equal the size of Lake Windrum. The district's services for collection and treatment cost the average household about $10 per month, a small price to pay for the convenience of advanced wastewater collection and treatment and to protect the area lakes. Today, Nine Springs serves over 330,000 people in five cities, seven villages, and ten towns. Let's take a closer look now at how nature's ways have been accelerated and improved upon to meet increased human demand for safe water. As in nature, the cycle of wastewater treatment is a continuous process. The Nine Springs Wastewater Treatment Plant operates 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Computerized control systems allow the plant operators and maintenance personnel to monitor and control over 50 pumping stations and the treatment plant processes. These skilled crafts workers and operators ensure that the well-designed processes and equipment are available and operating at peak efficiency, while a skilled laboratory staff with sophisticated instrumentation conducts thousands of ongoing sample test investigations that verify compliance with the discharge permit issued by the Department of Natural Resources. Wastewater from the communities served is channeled through building sewers to a system of sanitary sewers under the streets. Unlike storm sewers, which empty rain and runoff from our lawns and streets into area lakes and streams, sanitary sewers only collect wastewater. Each year, approximately 14 million additional gallons of wastewater is hauled to the plant via truck from rural septic and other holding tanks. The volume of wastewater flowing into the treatment plant is measured continually. Samples are automatically collected for daily analysis, 
To remove stringy materials, plastics, and large objects, the wastewater flows through screens. The material removed by the screens is shredded and dewatered before being placed in the dumpster. The wastewater which is passed through the screens flows to grit chambers, where centrifugal force is used to separate sand, gravel, and other gritty inorganic solids from the water. This heavy material is pumped from the grit chambers to a classifier system for washing and dewatering. The grit and screenings are hauled to a landfill. The wastewater then flows by gravity to a series of primary settling tanks, eight to 10 feet deep, where suspended organic solids settle to the tank floors and lighter materials float to the surface. Collectors travel through the tanks and push the solid matter, called primary sludge, to hoppers, which feed the sludge to the biosolids processing side of the plant. During the two-hour journey through the primary settling tanks, over 50% of the suspended organic solids are removed. The organic matter remaining in the wastewater, now called primary effluent, is a food source for the microorganisms growing in the secondary or biological treatment process. In the biological treatment stage, so called for the specific role microorganisms play here, several types of organisms are cultivated, each with a specialized task. These organisms consume the solids, convert ammonia, which is toxic to aquatic life, and remove phosphorus, which can accelerate weed growth in surface waters. Air is forced into the bottom of a series of 18-foot deep aeration tanks. The air bubbles through the tanks, supplying the oxygen the bacteria need to live and multiply. At the same time, the bubbling action helps keep the microorganisms mixed with their food supply, again mirroring the dynamic that occurs in nature in a bubbling stream or waterfall. Mixed liquor. This mixture of water and microorganisms flows via channels to 13-foot deep final clarifiers. Here, the microorganisms and remaining solids settle to the bottom of the tanks. Solids removed in this treatment stage are the biological culture. Most of them are returned to the aeration tanks to continue to treat incoming wastewater and keep the process biologically active. In the final step, the highly treated wastewater, now called final effluent, passes through a disinfection chamber that uses ultraviolet light to kill disease-causing bacteria. The effluent is then recycled back into the environment by pumping it to Badfish Creek and Badger Mill Creek. From the innovative uses of plant byproducts such as methane gas from the sludge stabilization process, to extensive capabilities and complex plant maintenance activities, to research projects with the University of Wisconsin, dedicated engineers, researchers, soil scientists, biologists, and technicians are using proven best practices to run the plant safely and efficiently. This emphasis on adopting best practices, utilizing environmentally sound technologies, and recycling every conceivable resource or byproduct of the wastewater treatment process is best illustrated in the production of MetroGrow and MetroMix. MetroGrow is an organic liquid fertilizer, 94 to 95 percent water. MetroMix is a soil-like product comprised of biosolids, sand, and sawdust. Both are rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, and other plant nutrients. Both are manufactured from the solids and microorganisms that settled out of the primary and secondary wastewater treatment stages. Primary sludge from the primary settling tanks flows to gravity sludge thickeners which remove more water. Secondary or activated sludge, named for the active microorganisms it contains from the final clarifiers, is sent to flotation thickeners which also remove water. The water removed from the sludge in the thickeners is recycled through the plant. After thickening, 
the primary and secondary sludge solids are combined and pumped to covered digesters to promote heat retention and decomposition. Here, anaerobic bacteria, microorganisms that live without air, decompose the solids for almost 20 days. This stabilization process produces carbon dioxide and methane gas. The methane gas is recycled and purified for use as fuel in three large engines. One engine drives a blower which forces air into the aeration tanks. The other two engines turn generators to create electricity, enough to continuously power 1,000 homes significantly reducing the amount of purchased energy for the plant. In addition, water used to cool these engines is reused to heat the digesters and several plant buildings. The final step in the production of MetroGrow is a thickening process, gravity belt filtration, which removes more water to reduce the volume of MetroGrow to be recycled to area farms. Metro Mix is produced by using a centrifuge to remove significantly more water from the biosolids. Then, sand and sawdust are blended with the dewatered biosolids to create a soil-like material. Specialized application vehicles inject the fertilizer into the soil to prevent runoff and other potential environmental problems. MetroGrow and MetroMix offer farmers and our communities an inexpensive alternative to chemical fertilizers. The Department of Natural Resources, in conjunction with the Environmental Protection Agency, issues standards and management criteria for biosolids and effluent discharge that must be met by the district to qualify for permits. These are standards that ensure protection of human health and environmental quality. Progress in these areas is evident in the test results coming from Badfish and Badger Mill Creeks. Due to the creek's small size, discharged effluent must meet a high standard to support a full and balanced population of fish and other aquatic life. Walleye, northern pike, largemouth bass, brown trout, and a diversity of minnows and insects show that water quality is not a limiting factor and has improved significantly over time. These forward-looking initiatives are keeping the Madison Metropolitan Sewerage District in the vanguard of wastewater treatment facilities and help to keep our area lakes, rivers and streams safe for humans and wildlife. Water. We have all we'll ever have for all time. Yet with time, the demand for it will grow as the Earth's population grows placing new demands on how it is used and treated. The Madison Metropolitan Sewerage District will continue to seek new and best practices to improve process management and effluent quality. Water is the ultimate recyclable, treated for life.